I do want to talk a little bit more about body language. It's something that has been discussed a lot throughout this trial and at the verdict last night. Lena Sisko is the CEO of the Congruency Group and a body language and statement analysis expert. She joins us now live to talk a little bit more about all of that. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. So first off, just your thoughts watching Alec Murdoch's behavior both last night as the verdict was read, but also as he took the stand and during his time in the courtroom in general. So there's one thing about body language you have to be not only a body language expert but you have to analyze the words people say because what you're looking for is the most accurate indicator of deception which is behavioral incongruence and that's when the body language does not match the spoken words and so there's two critical things that i watched in his behavior continuously throughout this trial and that is his behavioral incongruence and typically you see that with head nods and shakes so if I say yes and I'm nodding, that's congruent, that's good. But if I say no and I'm nodding, we have a problem. And early on in this trial, he was asked a few questions about seeing evidence and he said yes, congruent. But then when he was asked that pertinent question, did you brutally murder your wife and son? He said, no, I did not. So I had a problem with that. He also did a non-contracted denial, which is a convincing technique that people who are trying to convince you of something that's not true will use. And he finally did one other thing, which is disgust. And that's this, we squidge up our nose. And he did it twice, listening to two testimonies. And that was one of Maggie's sister, and then the other one of Paul's friend, Rogan. And both of them, said incriminating things and as he was listening to this he would sit in his chair and do this and leak disgust now some people may say well yeah that makes sense because it's something that goes against his innocence and he could be disgusted but again you have to match that up with the words that he's saying or hearing maggie's sister said that alec told her i don't know who did this but I know it's someone who thought about it for a long time. So the question I would have is, how would he know this? He's not a mind reader unless he knows who did it, unless it's himself. And as he listened to her say this, he was leaking that disgust. And I will tell you one thing, the truth always leaks out because the truth is right here. And when we have to lie, we have to put it aside and then drag up the lie or remember the lie. And so when he would say, or if in fact he did tell her, I don't know who did it, but I do know it's someone who thought about it a long time, that's pretty specific. And that tells me that's his true thoughts. And it was most likely him thinking about this murder for a long time. That's a lot of good analysis there because those are things <laughs> that a lot of people honestly probably would not have picked up on. So my next question mm -hmm. here is about the jury itself and are they able to pick up on things like this or do you have to be an expert to be able to determine this is what this person is doing, this is why they're doing it? So every one of us can pick up on things that make our gut say, ooh, I don't know if I should trust that or I don't believe this person. But the problem is that's like body language 101. You have to be an expert in not only body language, but statement analysis and human behavior in order to make that decision, critical decision, that somebody's lying or not. So for the jury, it's wise to remain as objective as they can. And even if they get those gut feelings, just to notice it and put it aside. Because what can happen is if they pick up on something that they don't understand, but they have that feeling that the person on the stand is not being honest, they may start to see everything that that person does as deceptive, and we call that the confirmation bias, and that's gonna be subjective. Do you think it's important for the prosecution and the defense to actually interpret the body language of the jurors themselves? I would say it's more important to make sure that those jurors are remaining objective. You can look at them in order to test the validity of the juror itself or maybe see if one of the jury members is becoming biased. I think that's critical. But in order for them to start reading the jury selection, I don't think that's the most important thing. I think that maintaining that objectiveness is. 
Do you think the fact that Alec Murdoch is actually an attorney, he's done this before, that he was aware, maybe overly aware, of his use of behavior, body language, and things of that nature? Absolutely. So he knew what questions were going to be asked, and typically they're yes, no questions and some leading questions. And in some of his answers, they made me laugh because I was thinking, well, that's exactly what he would ask. So he knows how to answer that question without giving too much away. And let's face it, if we're lying about something, the last thing we want to do is say too many words. That makes sense. Um, as far as uh, you are concerned, do you believe that a body language expert should actually be called in to testify in cases like this, not necessarily just Alec Murdoch's murder trial, but other similar cases? I do, as long as they're experts in that statement analysis and human behavior. I was analyzing a case years ago. It was a high visual case. It was in California, and the judge actually admitted my expert analysis as evidence. But it's because I was an expert in all those three areas, and I also got the chance to interview the witness. So right then and there, I could ask those pertinent questions to discover the truth. If you could advise a juror on what to actually look at when it comes to behavior, body language for witnesses, for the person who's on trial, what would you tell them to look for? Truthful people are forthcoming. Truthful people don't have stories. They don't change up their information. They're going to be behaviorally congruent. So if they say yes, they'll nod yes. If they say no, they'll nod no. They're going to have true emotions. That means they're congruent with what they're saying. If I'm telling you, you know what, I'm so sad and I'm so depressed, then that's what you should see on my face, not a smile. So just looking for people being genuine, forthcoming with information, and wanting to tell the truth. Are you going to be watching uh, behavior and body language once again today during the sentencing? I imagine you're paying very close attention to it all throughout. Yes, I will be watching. I guess the question then is, at this point, uh, Murdoch knows that he has been found guilty. He's going to be sentenced to anywhere between 30 uh, years in prison to life behind bars uh, without the possibility of parole. So I imagine he's probably going to be very, I guess, honed in on his own body language during the sentencing as well. Even though the trial itself is over, uh, just during the sentencing itself, he'll also be paying close attention, I imagine, to uh, the way that he is you know, moving his face, the way he's talking, that sort of thing. So when he read, was read the verdict, I don't know if you caught on to this, but he was nodding. As they were saying guilty, he was nodding. Hmm. And to me that said, yeah, I deserve this because I'm guilty. Which, I mean, considering that it took, I would say, under three hours for the jury to deliberate, it was pretty obvious that it was more than likely going to be a uh, guilty verdict there so I'm sure just his knowledge in working as an attorney he was probably uh, pretty well aware of that I would imagine oh yeah he has to know. he knows the game he knows the system he knows how it works and he played tried to play it to his advantage when he was on the stand but unfortunately those behavioral indicators they leaked out and also just the fact that he lied and if you go all the way back to the 911 call and when the police first arrived on the scene, his whole focus was protect himself, was to create an alibi. That is not someone who's innocent. That's someone who's guilty. Based on body language, is it possible to determine if he actually feels sad, if he feels bad about these murders? We now know that he has been found guilty, so he's been convicted of actually carrying these murders out. Can you tell by body language if he actually feels sad about it? I have conducted a hundred uh, more, hundreds of interviews and interrogations in my life. And I can tell you, you know true emotion and you know fake emotion. True emotion, you have the tears, you have the whole face moving. He had true emotion. But the question is, what was it about? Is it true emotion that he's sad that he got convicted because he's innocent? Or is it true emotion because everything is now settled in and he's come to grips with what he did, which I believe the latter. All right, Lena Cisco, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Anything else you want to add about all of this as we do await uh, sentencing getting underway in just a few minutes? 
Oof. Um, I think justice is being served. I'm very happy with the verdict. And just with, be careful when it comes to analyzing people. Make sure you do your due diligence and really focus on the words that people are saying, what you're seeing behaviorally, and ask those good questions to really get to the truth. And it sounds like you would need to really be an expert to be able to focus in on all of that and interpret it correctly, I'd imagine. Yeah, because it's a lot coming in at once. And you have to be able to listen and to look and to, you know, ask that follow up question. So, yes, it is a lot. All right, Lena Cisco, thank you again for taking the time to join us here and provide that expert analysis. Thank you so much.